is going on, everybody? We are doing some dry brushing today. We got this big statue head from Warcry, the main starter set. I'm going to probably ignore all the rubble around him because I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to paint that yet. But I think we're going to make him a big metal statue head. Uh, if you joined me in the last stream, it looked like the chat wasn't working, but I think it's working now. So if anybody is watching, jump in on the chat. And we're going to dry brush this bronze. He doesn't quite stand up good. So he's not actually the most balanced on my little handle here. He's just stuck on with poster tack. We're going to be using the ghost dry brushes. Mostly just probably the size two. I got a size one as well. And if need be, I got another size two on hand because when dry brushes start to get damp, they don't dry brush as well. Makes sense. So we might have to switch to an additional dryer dry brush while we have to, if we have to rinse out our dry brush. And we're gonna find, probably just try and find our darkest metallic we own. Which I think is gonna be rough iron. From Army Painter, it's a really, really dark metallic color. Uh, we'll go over some basics of dry brushing too. That way people watching this in the future, they'll have something interesting to follow along with. So I have the dry brush Kickstarter and a lot of the people obviously are gonna want a lot of good dry brush content so they know how to use them. So this is a way people used to build up metallics and I don't think it's used as often anymore, but this is how we used to do it uh, when I was younger, and it seemed like it was the standard, but now it's not, where you take a black primed or black base coated metal, and then you just dry brush metallics over the black. It can create a really cool effect and leave a really dark shadow. And I'm going to be using a piece of cardboard as my palette. So cardboard obviously is somewhat absorbent. We also have some paper towels on hand. How we're gonna start. I don't think I need to worry too much about this layer being super dried off because we're just going straight over the black. We'll dry off the brush more as we highlight. But what we're gonna do, you load the brush by stippling it into the paint. Tap, 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 maybe a twist or two. And that way you make sure you have a nice loaded brush. Then you would wipe it away. This is probably the area where we're gonna work for our base coat, but you could keep wiping it away. And this would be the amount of paint you would probably have if you were gonna start doing some real just delicate dry brushing. So you see if I really wipe that away that much, it's only getting picked up by the sharp edges of the little kind of rune on his head. But this is just our base coat, so we're gonna not worry about that. Basically, we're gonna be doing more of a, like a wet brush. And I'm gonna just cover the whole beard I'm gonna try to basically cover the whole thing, but I'm not gonna stress if black is still showing. You can do circular motions. A lot of times with dry brushing, you'll do just a single direction to make it look like light is only hitting from one direction. But right now what we're doing is building up a base coat. So you can see it already looks pretty cool.
And I'm still not 100% sure on how I'm going to paint my war cry terrain, the ruins, which are basically surrounding this guy. Uh, so if anybody has any suggestions, let me know in the comments or in the chat. But uh, I'm actually leaning towards maybe red or purples for kind of a, uh, I don't know, almost demonic, you know, I don't know, demonic kind of landscape or possibly like a Slanesh ruined city maybe. And we're really just scrubbing it in. And the advantage of these dry brushes and the shape is they have a really fat hair clump, I guess you would call it. The bristles are all tucked together really nice. So you can be pretty rough. And even as you see, I'm grinding it away, the shape is still holding. And I'm just trying to make sure I get the statue all over. Probably got a little too much on my brush there. It's not a big deal. We'll just try to work it away from that area with our brush. So there's kind of the lighter dry brush we've been doing. That area kind of got a little more, but it doesn't matter. This is just the very, very beginning. This is kind of a slow process. You could kind of get this started with like an airbrush. I could have airbrushed this metal on over the black. That could have been a way to base coat it, this kind of dark bronze color. This is gonna work really nice. Plus any natural missing, like anywhere we miss our paint handle holder things not holding on very good. Anywhere we miss and leave black, oh well, it should be fine. But we're trying not to leave anything black. So we're really just scrubbing it in there. Uh, if anybody has any questions or comments, please use the chat. I am glancing over and checking it. Also, if anybody could just type anything in the chat, that would be good too, because I actually don't know if it's working, because last stream, the chat wasn't working. I don't know if that was a YouTube thing, or maybe I did something wrong. Gonna need a little more paint. If you're just tuning in, this is Rough Iron from Army Painter. It's a really nice dark kind of copper, bronze color. Using kind of circular motions is a good way. I think I might have to just hold it. Unfortunately, my handle keeps deciding it's worthless. Circular motions are a good way to try and get the whole area from all directions. Directional dry brushing is a good way for highlighting. We'll probably do a combination of both later. And even, I mean, if you were just speed painting this, I mean, it already looks pretty cool. If you hit it with like a gloss Agrax wash or one more layer of a brighter bronze color dry brush, and then hit it with like an Agrax gloss, maybe some patina, you'd have a nice looking statue head. So just gonna keep working on it. I had to take the little handle off. It just wasn't, didn't wanna work good.
really trying to get it in those deep areas because we probably won't be going back to those much. So I wouldn't mind them being a dark, dark, rough iron color while the rest highlight gets highlighted around it. And this almost has even a bit of like a purple tone because you can see the black coming through from the black primer. This works really, really well over black primer. Probably wouldn't work at all over white primer. So there's a good example of how your primer coat is going to matter. Look at this cool lightning bolt earring. That's how you know Sigmar means business. I believe this is a statue of Sigmar's face. So apparently Sigmar had this kind of 80s lightning bolt earring, which is always cool. That's why he was a feared warrior, I guess. <laughs> I don't even know. Is he a warrior or was he a warrior? I remember an old Warhammer fantasy you used to be able to take uh, – God, what was this? Uh, now I blanked. Not Volkmer, but Volton. He was like the chosen of Sigmar, and he could take him – Mounted on a griffin or on a horse or just on foot. And he was awesome. All right. So there we go. If you want a cool, I mean, if you were even doing like a vase or something for your uh, apartment or house, you know, and you want it to look like a rustic bronze, this is a good tutorial for that as well, obviously. So there is the bronze base coat statue. Just so I don't waste any paint on the palette, I'm going to go ahead and try to get any extra and just put it on. Especially down in here where it's really going to be hard to reach. Cool. All right, so I'm not washing this brush yet. This brush should have very little paint on it. It still has good movement. You see that? It's not, because it's so dry, I don't need to wash it right away. If this was wet paint, it would all clump together, dry into a solid paintbrush and be ruined. But this is dry, so we're gonna be fine. I'm not washing this for a little while. And the reason I don't wanna wash it is because once it gets damp, it doesn't work the same anymore. It won't work like a normal dry brush. It ends up, being more of a wet brush, which is not what we're going for right now. I'm going to go Brass Scorpion on the next layer here. This one is some really uh, bottom of the barrel paint here. It's really about to run out, but hopefully we have enough. Well, I'm sure we have enough for this statue. Uh, so I'm going to just load it up. So obviously you wouldn't want to leave this on your brush or you will destroy it. But we're going to work it out and we'll just kind of work it into the same spot that our other color was. Kind of helps us see what the kind of gradation is. And this one we're going to do kind of an all over dry brush again. Well, this is the first highlight, but it's not, it doesn't need to be directional yet. I don't think we really got enough. Well, you can kind of see it. I think we'll even, I mean, we could even leave this part darker, but this is still such a darker, part of the, I guess, dry brushing phase that we're going to do it all over and just keep creating like a kind of sparkle. Okay. Yeah. I think that first pass, I just didn't have 
good paint on the brush. I picked it out from the top of the pot and it didn't mix good. And now this is looking better. So get down there. We're gonna be less concerned with getting all the deep areas like we tried in the beginning. But we are gonna attempt to hit them, just not with any real uh, over amount of effort, I guess you could say. It's more about we're gonna try to hit them with a dry brush, but we're not gonna dig at it. If some of it stays dark, it stays dark, that's fine. You can still use circular motions. That's gonna be good on these areas where there's like hair curving over doing kind of like a circle like that. Let me get some of these areas. I just swipe at it with my brush. So already pretty cool. Hopefully you think so and it looks pretty good. Fortunately, Brass Scorpion is on the way into the garbage probably after this project. Well, I'll probably keep it around for a little bit, but just keep making sure you're wiping it on your cardboard. Control how much paint is being deposited. As you keep going, I mean, the paint could be building up in your dry brush. You don't want to get a, at this stage, it's not a big deal. But later, you don't want to get a big splotch of paint. We're still using the size 2 ghost dry brush here. So all of this will be figured out later once I figure out what all the runes are going to be. I'll sh show you I got one of them I glued earlier. But so there's like big ruins with like metal gates and stuff. And later we're gonna just have to figure out what that means in our world. I can feel the paint getting really gummed up on my brush. So it's getting to the point now where it's probably a good time to wash it. Which I will do once I finish this hair. But I can, you can feel it like there's like a thickness to it. Try to keep my arms off the table, but this much dry brushing gets a little uncomfortable. My size two dry brush from the Kickstarter is great for miniatures and stuff. It's probably, it's, well, it's gonna be really great for picking out like details on these ruins and highlighting this guy, but it's for base coating, it might be a little small for this, but obviously it's working really good. So I can't say, you know, it doesn't work great. But if you had a bigger brush in this first two steps, you could use it. All right, so we're going to wash this off. And you can, I really scrub it when you're cleaning a dry brush. I'm, I mean, that's a lot of, let me turn off this light for a second. That's a lot of paint that's coming out. And it's still coming because these dry brushes hold a lot of paint and a lot of moisture. And we gotta keep going. So because these paint or these brushes hold a lot of paint and a lot of moisture and water, you gotta do this quite a few times to get it clean. Which luckily you can be pretty rough with it like I'm being. Obviously you don't want to have dirty paint water or you'll never know when your brush is clean. 
but you can tell I'm still getting a lot of paint out of it. Try to. My paint water is not crystal clear right now, but. And it looks probably a little darker on camera for you guys actually than it does in real life. But I'm still, I can still see paint kind of dry brushing over the towel. So I set that paper towel to the side and just grab another one. That's just a napkin. And see, there's still some discoloration coming on. So you got to be a little extra careful cleaning your dry brush. You got to be, I mean, you can be rough with it and beat it, you know, into the paper towel pretty good. And then also when it dries, you can go back and wash it again. As long as you don't let it clump together, like right there's a concern where, see right there? That's where it, when I stuck it all the way to the bottom, that side touched like the rim or something and got some paint right in there. Uh, you don't want to do that. But it seems to be not affecting it. So this is clean enough for right now. I would go on with some Dawn dish soap or a bar of soap or your brush soap when you're done and give it a full clean. So when we're all done, I'll probably run it through the master's brush cleaner and preserver. And sorry, there are lights so bright. Uh, I'll wet the brush and I'll stir it around here in the soap. You can see all the paint that it's gotten off. And basically you'll stir it around, rinse it off, stir it around, rinse it off, stir it around, rinse it off until that lather is more or less white. And that's how you'll make sure the brush is completely clean when you're done. Now, another concern with dry brushing is now this brush is not dry, right? I've been rinsing it off. I've been uh, rubbing it on the paper towel. It's probably still got some moisture. You can check it on your hand. I can feel it. There's a little bit of moisture in there still. You can use your fingers to try to squeeze the end of it. And you can see there, I'm getting moisture out. And this would be if you only had one dry brush and you wanted to keep dry brushing. Now would be a good time to try to get it dry again. If you have two, I haven't even used this one yet. If you have two, now would be a good time after you've given it a good clean, try to get the moisture out. You could set it aside and just switch to an actual dry one, which I think we will do. No, actually we won't. That's what I would do if, like for me, I have unlimited amounts of dry brushes. I could switch to a dry one, but you might not. You might only have one. So we're going to stay with this one and I'll just show you how to do it. So let's just try to rub it on the paper, the uh, Taco Bell napkin. <laughs> I haven't, so you can see there's still moisture coming out, but that should be pretty good. You can push down and spin it. And that's going to give you a good chance to get some of those center bristles out. You can see moisture still coming out. You don't want to like take it and like duh, all the way down, but by pushing down, pulling it to the side a little bit and then spinning it, you can remove some extra paint, some extra moisture. So that feels pretty dry to me. And this one has been taking a beating for a lot of projects and it's still kicking. And you can see, we've just been pounding it away and it's still holding a really good shape for our task. So I think everybody who backed the Kickstarter is gonna be really happy with these because I've been really happy with them and that's why we're offering them. So, so far 
he was primed black. He got kind of overbrushed, dry brushed with rough iron from Army Painter. Then he got kind of overbrushed, dry brushed with brass scorpion. So now we need a brighter bronze color or copper color. I don't know which one I have that's going to be great for this. I didn't really plan this out 100% before I started. Because this is a live stream. Uh, feel free to jump in the chat. Let me know what you like, don't like so far. I think this one's going to be a good option here. And this is Molten Bronze from P3. We're starting to get more into a yellowy gold. My other option was going to be Gehenna's Gold from Citadel, which just separates like crazy. I can't believe how much this paint. I feel, I mean, just a side note, these two paints I would never buy from Games Workshop. Auric Armor Gold and Gehenna's Gold. Look at the, like, you can't, I mean, just the separation of that is, and I put these on the paint shakers and they just, all that little gold flake settles to the bottom. But we'll probably end up using Gehenna's Gold. We'll just have to shake it up. But for this step, we're gonna use Molten Bronze from P3. P3 actually has some pretty solid metallic colors. Uh, anybody watching, if you could jump in the chat and just say anything, that would be helpful for me to know if the chat is working. And then also, if we want, we could communicate by giving me thumbs ups. <laughs> uh, this one's really cakey. And I'm trying to shake it up, but nothing's moving. You could see down there, maybe it's another one that's about to be in the garbage. But it... All right, so we'll load our brush again. Hey, we're Dark Initiative in the chat. Okay, cool. The, uh... <laughs> yeah. The uh, chat wasn't working on the last stream I did, so I was hoping somebody would type something just so I could see. And it's the same way here. We're going to circular rub off the paint, but keep kind of dabbing back into the paint and then rubbing it off. Dabbing back into the paint, rubbing it off. I'm trying to fully load the brush here. And you can see that it's all the way around, more or less, a nice layer of gold and every hair, more or less, on the front, right? So that's a loaded up dry brush, perfect for dry brushing. Now is, I think, when we're going to start considering direction. So I think I'm going to dry brush in this direction, so from this area down this way. And that's going to start to say that there's some light coming from up here. And the next step, we'll probably just selectively pick out details of his face. Now, because it's an eye, even though it's a statue, I'm going to just try to hit it with a little, even though it's in the shadow. So what I'm doing is just brush down, over in one direction, up and off, and then back again. But I'm doing it fast. So I'm not brushing, I'm not brushing it this way and then brushing it again back up the opposite direction. Um, I don't like the Citadel dry range at all. I think you, I mean, I think you just stab your dry brush into it, rub it off and dry brush with it. But because it's not good for other things, I don't know that it's really a worthwhile product. Some people like them though. I'm not sure if I still have any. So I'm trying to hit basically this half and above and then trying to leave this half and below darker. So this will be the darker area. Like 
here and here will be a little darker. This isn't going to be like super dramatic lighting. Make sure we get that sweet lightning bolt. We might actually pick that lightning bolt out with like a different color metallic. I don't know. Probably not because this is like a, a cast bronze statue. So it's not like he's actually has a lightning bolt <laughs> earring on. Well, the dry range is good for dry brushing. So, I mean, if you plan on dry brushing your Tyranids, it's gonna work good for that. The only thing I just don't care for it about is it's not good for anything else. Like it's not thin enough to paint. When you open them up, you'll see they're really chunky. Probably kind of similar to my old uh, molten bronze here. So on the hair here, I'm just doing it in one direction down. And because there's a big lip right here, it's not really, it might hit a little bit. This is really a soft pressure. A little bit there just to give it a hint of reflected light. Another option for this could be, uh, could start dry brushing like some silvers onto it and then use some wash to knock the silvers back into like kind of bronzy tone. Like dry brush a little bit of silver, maybe at the final highlight and then hit it with like some kind of ink or something to tint all the silver back to a bronze kind of color. But I think this is looking good enough for right now. All right, so I think that's probably good. We're not washing this yet. You can see it's still got pretty good separation of the hairs but it's a little stiff, but I don't want to go through the whole process of drying it out again. And now we're going to go to Gehenna's Gold and if we can <laughs> shake this up. What color are you doing your Tyranids Dark Initiative? All right, I shook it as hard as I could, and it looks like it's slightly not as separated. Uh, you can still see that there's quite a bit of separation in the pot. But up here, it looks okay. And we'll test it right here. Let's see. Yeah, that's a pretty good step as far as it looks brighter. I'm gonna spin my dry brush to help load it. It's fully loaded. Now, this is gonna be maybe the final highlight, so we'll pay attention slowly to how we're building it up on the nose. Still directional, right? Just down. Mustache. Maybe just the top ridge of this hair here. Cheekbone here. I wanna to try to bring extra attention to the face, bottom lip. This color though, I'm not gonna put in this bottom half of his face. It's gonna stop basically here on the bridge of his nose. The subtleties don't show up as much on camera as they do in real life. 
probably spend a little extra time saying, you know, this medallion thing on his forehead is a little bit brighter and his kind of headband here. But still treating him as if, you know, he is just one solid object. Whoop. I actually went a little low on that. And there we go. We got uh, some highlights built up on him now with our final Gehenna's gold. And there he goes, a pretty sweet looking bronze statue. Let's try it without the light on, maybe without the reflections. No, nope, that's too dark, huh? <laughs> Maybe I can put a cover over it here. But yeah, there you go. That's uh, hopefully, I don't think it's easy to tell, but so it's lighter here and then it's darker here. Not by a ton, but it is. Maybe you, you can kind of see there, like this kind of hair is darker than this hair. And that's because it's going to be on the table like this. And then now I think we hit it with some wash. Whoop. Or just drop it instead. So we'll let that dry. Here's I'll show you a nice demonstration of really cleaning this dry brush. So maybe we'll put him right there for right now. Bring out my water pot, which is not super clean, but I'm rubbing it against the side. You can see right there. And then on my pile of paper towels or napkins. I'm really scrubbing it off. Maybe we'll switch sides because that way you can see a little better. Let me get some Taco Bell napkins because they show up a little better on camera. <laughs> I'm running out of Taco Bell napkins. I haven't been to Taco Bell in like a month or more because I always go to Taco Bell when I'm at the game store because it's in the same shopping center as the, the game store I hang out at. So I always get my bean burritos for lunch or dinner while I'm gaming. And without the game store, I haven't had any trips to Taco Bell. So I'm running out of my Taco Bell napkins. Also, right before the pandemic, they were really stingy with their napkins. You had to ask. Like, can I have four, please? <laughs> but before that, you could just take as many as you wanted. So every time I eat it, you know, take 10 napkins, use a couple for your meal, and throw a couple in your paint box. So that's a good scrubbing. You can see we got most of the metallic off just by water and scrubbing away at it. Now I'm gonna take the brush soap. This is the master's brush cleaner. You could use any bar of white soap. You could use your hand with like Dawn dish soap and rub it in your hand like this. You could use a variety of cleaners. Uh, I'll actually just use distilled water, but I'm going to put some water in there. This is just so dirty. I, it's going to be hard to tell. But basically, we might have to turn off the light for this. 
You're gonna swish it around in your soap. And if you got white lather, then you're in a good spot. And we're looking good. This is pretty good. I'm gonna rotate my brush to get the soap off. And then I kind of actually smear it back out, I'm like kind of flatten it back out on the surface, just because I know it's still good. So now the brush is really loaded up with soap. This is about as good as we're gonna get. Um, we could have used like a brush cleaner in here or airbrush cleaner. You could put a little bit of airbrush cleaner into your little soap cup here and use that. So it's like getting the double whammy of the airbrush cleaner plus. Now with our loaded up soapy brush here, you could use your hand and I'll show you on the top of the lid here. So let's take a touch more water. And we're gonna kind of do circles. We're gonna spin it like we have been. Never on a paintbrush do you like take it this way, and push in the direction of the hair. That's a really good way to curl your hair. But if you do it really gently, it's also a okay way to really make sure that soap is getting all the way deep into the middle. But so there we go. I mean, that lather's white. So we're good. I'm gonna take, just dip it back in our water here. Wipe it off on a paper towel or a Taco Bell napkin. And now we're gonna use our soapy dry brush and water to basically clean our lid that we just dirtied up for this demonstration. And you can see the lather is still white. So we're good. Take our uh, napkin here and just clean this out. The light's back on. I'm just cleaning this out just for you don't have to. Why not? Get all that soap out of there. There we go. So we can now return the brush cleaner back on. And we'll have to just rinse this out a couple more times. But you can see it's returned to a pretty good coloration even with this dirty paint water. This paint water is not even like that many days old, but when you airbrush and dump your airbrush out into it, it dirties it up real quick. But there's also like airbrush cleaner and stuff getting dumped in there too. It's kind of a mixture of dirty paint water and airbrush cleaning products. And now we're just rinsing to get the soap off but the soap will rinse, I mean, it's water soluble. So if there's soap residue left on it, we'll be able to get that off next time we use it. Downside of course being, you don't really want to start with a wet or damp dry brush. So there we go. Let's, I'm trying it right here on the cardboard. And to me, that looks like just wet cardboard. I don't see any paint coming out or I don't really, can't see any real lather. So I think we're good. One quick dry on a paper towel. And that's it, right? So this is our used ghost dry brush. And this is a brand new one next to it. This one's been used, it's wet. So the hairs are gonna look like they're separating a lot more, but in reality they'll once it's dry, it goes back to being fluffy. But you can see the shape holds really well. And if, let's say, for example, just a quick brush care tip. Remove this unpleasing paint water. Let's just say, for example, 
you don't like that hair sticking out right there. It's not gonna make any difference, but let's just say you don't like the aesthetic of it. Or maybe it's going out much farther than you want. Take your sprue clippers and just take that hair and there you go, cut it off. And now it's back to a good shape. It's also a good tip for your other brushes too. If you have a hair you don't like, you can, because on the outside of the bundle, you can clip it. So that's it. That is a 46 minute dry brush demo from black primer to awesome golden statue. Now I think the, we can probably hit it with a wash. And I'm thinking maybe Agrax Gloss. I don't know if it needs like any rust effects. It could. I, I do really enjoy this one here, Dark Rust from Vallejo. But I don't think this one needs it. This one could have some like verdigris though on it, which maybe we'll do after this wash. So we'll probably hit that later with some of that. And what we would use for that is Nylic Oxide from GW. Thin down. This is like teal paint if you don't thin it down. Or we could use the verdigris from Game Color, which is a lighter version of this. And uh, also thin way, 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 way down, like 10 to 1 thinner to paint. That way it really is just settling in the most subtle areas. All right, so we're going to get our biggest crazy natural hairbrush. And this is works almost like a mop. And we're going to give our whole model a wash. I'm going to really dunk it in there and just load it up. And we'll just start with the ear here, right? So that's a ton of wash there. And then we'll use our big moppy brush here to work it away from that ear and cover the whole statue. And this will help darken the recesses a bit, but because we actually took the time to do a dry brush buildup, the recesses are dark, right? So this is just giving us an overall tint and a slight, you know, unification, I guess, of color. And those recesses are going to stay dark. Maybe it'll darken up some. If any of our dry brush got into some areas that maybe we didn't want it, this will help, you know, darken that back down, knock it down. If I, now I'm going Agrax gloss here. If you were going with the regular Agrax, it would stain it way, way more. And you probably don't want that on this surface. If you're doing metals, I highly, highly suggest the Games Workshop gloss washes. The gloss version of the washes, really great for metals. I use it on, I use the Agrax gloss on my Admech. It gives all the metal a, uh, almost like a oil kind of effect. Like oil and stuff has been spilling out on their mechanical engine body parts. So this is just an all over wash. Also, this gloss wash is going to work a little bit like a protective coat because anything gloss is generally pretty protective in the paint world. And then this gloss wash should help the uh, verdigris find its recesses better or easier. 
although we won't because I'm really loading it on we won't actually be able to do that vertigree step right now it'll take too long to try this will be something I just I mean maybe half an hour or whatever but I'll just set it to the side and check it tomorrow morning probably so there we go uh now I'm going to use this brush to just absorb any major pooling by just kind of dabbing it into the really deep nooks. And that's just because I was using so much, you know, some of it really could have pooled down there. And to try to save it, I'll run it on the lip there and see if I can get it, you know, back in my pot here. Actually, it seems like because the surface of the statue is so big, our, even our pooling's not too bad. Another thing you want to avoid with the, as this wash drains down the surface, you know, all of this could just run off onto the table or your desk or whatever. So that's what absorbing it with this brush is going to help prevent. But we also could just let it dry on a piece of cardboard. That way, if any of this wash, as it runs down, if it starts pooling, like in this area, you know, say it's pouring out down there and pooling around. Well, at least it's just on a piece of cardboard. So no harm done to the furniture. All right, I think that's our demonstration for working up a kind of bronze statue with the dry brushes. It's a really cool way to get a lot of kind of weathered metal effect. Oh, actually, we're going to absorb out of his little icon there. Yeah, you get a really cool weathered effect. And when you, for not a lot of work, I mean, it takes a little bit of time. But even if you like airbrush, airbrushed at bronze and then dry brush, that could save you one step, or perhaps you could, uh, if you tried to airbrush the whole thing, it would look airbrushed. It wouldn't have the cool weathering effect of the black still showing. So you can see hopefully, yeah, like it's hard to see because it's a reflective surface, but like the reason you can see there that like, it's really a dark, it looks like a dark bronze, but up close, it's really just because it's only a little bit of bronze over the black primer. And that's what built up a really cool looking statue. Uh, actually, here's not a bad tip. Let's check from below to see if any wash is <laughs> pooling up underneath. And go ahead and hit it with the Taco Bell napkin. Yeah, see, we got quite a bit off there. So we're going to let them dry on the uh, cardboard, though. And that'll, that way, if he sticks to it, we can just rip him off and scrape away any cardboard. So I got a whole giant War Cry terrain set I have to paint. I still have not decided on the color scheme. So if you have any recommendations for color schemes or you've seen videos that you want to link or Instagram profiles that did a cool terrain set for Warcry, send them to me. Let me know. And there we go. We got this one cleaned up again. Mighty Pie in the building, Bone White. I am actually think I'm going to go in with uh, – I think I'm doing a color. And part of me is thinking like almost maybe like a purple into like a rosy cream color. 
seen some cool kind of teal ones, which is an option, but I've, I've out of all the colored ones, I've seen probably teal and kind of blue green ones the most. So I don't think I'm going to go that route. But yeah, I was thinking, uh, Oh, it's always hard to show up, but try to get it out of the reflection of the light. Kind of like a purpley shadow into like a bone, or not a bone, but like a cream kind of color. And obviously the cream color would be, this is called bright skin from Reaper, but the cream color would be, you know, dry brushed with a bunch of... Uh, Dry brush with like a bunch of grays and bone whites and stuff like that as well, built up, but maybe enough uh, purple. And how I think I might actually do it is I think I'm going to spend quite a bit of time airbrushing in the pre shading, maybe including quite a bit of that kind of creamy, rosy skin tone, and then maybe just glazing purple ink towards the bottoms or just from a bottom direction. I could do a buildup too of like Tuscogore fur, which is kind of a clay pink color. And then build up to like kind of that sunny skin tone color on top, near the tops. But yeah, I wanna make it, there's so much of it, but part of me, I see the, uh, well, one thing I see a lot of the terrain on YouTube is like a lot of speed paint tutorials. And so I'm actually, it's kind of motivating me to maybe try extra hard and really make my set look really nice. I'm going to just take a Q-tip and absorb some of this wash I see pooling down here. This step is not necessary, <laughs> but since I use so much of that gloss wash, yeah, I'm getting quite a bit. But yeah, I mean, I don't think anybody could argue that that looks Pretty cool. I could pick out the eyes, which I might do now that I mentioned it. Like maybe the eyes were set with like a different stone when this, or you know, a different metal or a stone maybe of some kind when the statue was created before it was destroyed. But yeah, that's my thought. I think what I'm gonna do, I got uh, some of these gluing together um but yeah i think if i really just play up the value scale back and forth with the airbrush i could then go in with purple inks and then go in with the dry brushing on top and i think we could create a pretty solid effect so all right, we got about one minute left for the dry brush demo. Uh, I know we already completed it, so hopefully if you weren't interested in how I'm going to paint the rest of the terrain, you already clicked away. It's about 5 o'clock in the morning here, so I think it's about time to wind down and call it a night. Yeah, I'll definitely be streaming it. Uh, you know, here and there, there's so much. So it won't ever be probably like, you know, beginning to end. Like, I guess I could take like a single piece and try to do like a beginning to end. But I think I'd rather just get it all built up and do it all kind of together. So a lot of it will be on stream, but there won't be, you know, the earlier streams will be the earlier parts. And the as it goes on, I'll be working on the finer details. Our uh, swooping hawks are getting close to completion. I'm just going to pick up.
pick out a few more details, highlight the gold and the blue, and figure out exactly what I want to do with these wings. I got these guys from Deep Madness I need to finish, and that will complete the set, the expansion set Rise of Dagon, or Dragon or something, Rise of Dagon. Uh, so these will be just a quick paint job of maybe on stream, maybe not. But. And this weekend I should be getting my unmade war band for Warcry. So I'd also like to get them built up. And I'm going to, the plan for them is I'll build them and get them looking, uh, you know, probably primed, Zenithal primed, maybe a airbrush layer of base coat or something and then probably work on them about one at a time one figure at a time on stream so i think that could give us some good content hopefully people would enjoy watching the unmade get painted up on stream and i think that's all i got looks like he's actually pretty dry now so there's a final look at him I'll probably go in with some heavily, heavily thinned out nylic oxide and just put a little bit here and there on. And we'll probably do, I'm going to make sure though that the uh, Agrax gloss is 100% dry. So this will probably be done tomorrow. Maybe I'll make a video of that, doing that tomorrow. This one always scares me though. It's just, sometimes I think it looks better without it, but. A lot of people really like the effect of the oxide, so I think I'm going to do it. I'll probably just do that one maybe as a video. That way it's searchable and people don't have to watch it for an hour because it should only take, you know, a minimal amount of time to nylic oxide one statue. So, all right. Uh, hopefully everybody enjoys. Yeah, the uh, – it's like you have to thin it way, way down or it just looks like you put this teal paint in all the crevices. So I'm going to try to even thin it down more than I normally do and see if I can, you know, try to get it about as subtle as possible. Another option I do have is the Faded Blue Secret Weapon. It's dry pigment. So it's kind of right there in that same patina scale which would be maybe pretty nice too because he has a terrain feature, but. All right, I think that's all we got for right now. Uh, please subscribe if you made it through the video and enjoyed yourself. Uh, we'll be doing a lot of Warcry terrain, some Eldar stuff, uh, the Unmade Warband, and whatever else we figure out we want to work on. So looks like still got about a month maybe before we can go play any games at the game store. So I'm just going to keep working on my habit of trying to do roughly nightly streams and work daytime working on the Kickstarter. So thank you everybody so much for watching and joining in the conversation. Mighty Pie, have a good night. Probably talk to you tomorrow.